Hello. So I decided to start vlogging for fun. Because <laughs> for once, I actually have something to talk about. So this, this is my OLKB X-Drop plank. It is a 40% ortholinear mechanical keyboard. Oops, I'm holding it upside down. Disclaimer, um, this is gonna be a vlog channel, not a keyboard channel. So I'll probably talk about other stuff too if I ever, you know, get a life. If you are one of my friends that is watching this video for moral support and you don't know what a mechanical keyboard is, thank you. I love you. Without getting too technical about it, um, mechanical keyboards are computer keyboards that have switches under each key rather than the rubber membranes used in most common keyboards. That's in my notes. I got that from Google. Um, and most normal keyboards look like this. So this is a keyboard that I got at the start of quarantine when I was uh, just getting into the hobby of mechanical keyboards. Yes, mechanical keyboards are a hobby. A terrible one. Very expensive. But why did I get into mechanical keyboards in the first place? Um, if you're like me and you were forced to work from home at the start of quarantine and you only had a laptop at home, then you probably spent a good amount of time sitting for hours on end with not very ergonomic setups. And not just work hours too, like I'd be on my laptop way into the night because there isn't anything to do except wallow in my own depression and escape the routine alienating feeling of living day in and day out in the ever-present capitalist hellscape that we all live in. So, I developed RSI, or Repetitive Strain Injury, on my wrist. Um, to reduce it, I got a normal membrane keyboard, which I don't have anymore. But, I kept researching and heard that the tactility and the sound on a mechanical keyboard was just superior in every way. So after a couple months of a lot of research, I bought this. Now, getting a keyboard helped a lot with my RSI, but it didn't completely go away. There are a lot of factors that contribute to this. Um, bad posture, non-ergonomic setup, my non-ergonomic mouse, playing too many mobile games. And after a long time of just kind of researching into the mechanical keyboard space, you know, looking around for other keyboards, I got into keyboard ergonomics. And after some research, my lovely boyfriend, this bestowed this gift upon me. And when I showed this to my friends, I got a lot of comments like, It looks so weird, how do you time? It looks so small. Oh. Those are not bad things. Okay? Let me explain to you why it looks so weird. So first of all, it's ortholinear, which means it's arranged in a grid matrix. Um, as opposed to the normal row staggered keys. You'd think normally that these keys are arranged in a way to make your fingers like fan out like this when you type. And like this isn't really ergonomic in any way. Um, in a normal touch typing diagram, you'll see that the keys actually skew to the left. And the only reason it's still like that now is because that's just how typewriter key levers were arranged and we just never stopped arranging them that way. I keep looking up there because that's where my screen is, but this is where the camera is. So as opposed to that, the keys on an ortholinear keyboard are supposedly like equal distance between every key. Like every key is just one key away equally. Another thing is that it's a 40% form factor, which means it's really small, like compared to this. Um, many ortholinear keyboards come in a 40% layout, and for the non-nerds out there who are still watching at this point, mechanical keyboards come in many different sizes, and they remove more keys the smaller they get. The full-size keyboard with a number pad is 100%, this one's a 65%, which means uh, there's no number pad, there's nav of keys, there's arrow keys, um, no function row, and the plank is a 40%. Uh, that means there's no number row, no function row, no number pad, no nav keys. It's just this. Um, I'm gonna link a different video in the description about form factors if anyone else maybe wants to learn more and if you're not in the hobby already. For most people, a 65% is probably as small as they'll go. 
because they're probably not willing to give up arrow keys and they already don't want to get rid of the number row. And a 40% is small oh. compared to that, so way too small for most people. And you'd think that it would be hard to reach a lot of things, but in reality, everything's there. It's just on an extra layer. Um, that just means you have to press some extra keys to get the functions that you normally would get. And you think it's troublesome, but it's actually not. You have two hands, right? It's, well, most people have two hands. I'm sorry if that's ableist. And also, because of its size, I'm basically forced to be really creative about how I made my key map. It makes me a lot more mindful about what keys I actually use. Yeah, I Marie kondo my keyboard. For example, I moved my backspace down here. Two reasons. One, I don't use my left thumb when I type on a normal keyboard. Two, I find that when I'm typing on a normal keyboard and I'm on my home row and I have to reach all the way over here just to hit backspace and then I try to go back to my position in the home row, I make a lot more typos because there's like this pause where I have to find the home row. So with this, with my backspace at the bottom, I don't have to move from the home row that much when I'm typing. That was a lot of pauses, damn. For the numbers, I just press this and I have a layer here with my number pad. By the way, a number pad is just superior to a number row. Like, why would you, why would you need that? My shift key doubles as caps lock and number lock, depending on the layer. Uh, maybe I'll show my key map here. Flash, 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 flash. And this is all possible because this is QMK compatible. And QMK is just a program that's made for programming mechanical keyboards and it's actually making keyboards a lot more powerful than they normally are like i can move my mouse i can move my mouse cursor with with my keyboard i don't have to isn't that crazy isn't that crazy crazy you might have also noticed that my alphas are arranged really weird and that's because um i changed my layout because qwerty sucks there's no actual logic to how QWERTY letters are arranged. The most commonly used letters in the alphabet are just kind of scattered everywhere, but it's just it's just how we're used to. Um, and I didn't change layout for any reason other than ergonomics, like it, you don't type faster or anything. So this layout is called Workman, and Workman was developed so that the most commonly used letters are on the home row, on the columns where your fingers are commonly resting, and then the middle columns are the least used letters. And the most common letters are on the rows with the strongest fingers. The layout also makes the split between typing with your left and right hand as even as possible. Whereas in QWERTY, it's actually leaning more towards your left hand. After all that, the most important thing is, did it work? Well, and uh, contrary to what I thought, um, I'm still getting strain on my wrist from using it. This is mostly because of how compact it is. So everything's kind of squished together. My hands kind of, are kind of like super close together. So my shoulders, um, I feel a lot of strain on my upper back and shoulders. I have to consciously like straighten my back all the time because if I don't, I'm going to feel a lot of pain in my upper back. It's also caused by the flat angle of the case. It's completely flat as opposed to a keyboard like this which is angled and actually has um, feet to prop it up so that you can even increase the angle. So what I do with this is I prop it up sometimes um, with something just to create more of an angle. It helps relieve some of the strain. This might be a point of contention, but I also did switch the springs up into something lighter. I got Gatoron Yellows, which have a normal spring of like 50 grams, I believe. Uh, and I noticed that I was getting a lot of strain uh, compared to when I used this keyboard, uh, which came with Gatoron Reds pre-built, and the springs are 45 grams. Uh, I felt like I was getting a lot of strain for that 5 gram difference for no reason, but I'm weak. I'm weak! So I changed all the springs inside to 40 grams. Uh, I lose a lot of the nice feel, but I definitely feel like there's all the strain is gone after all these modifications. But for reference, a lot of people tend to go for the higher range, just like 60 to 70 gram springs. Maybe that would work better if this wasn't so compact and so flat angled. But I do use it as a daily driver, so it's fine now. 
In the future, I'll probably get something that's a split ergonomic keyboard, like a Lily 58 or an Iris keyboard. But for now, the plank is working perfectly fine as my daily driver, and I'm pretty satisfied with it. That's all. Um, till the next vlog, if I actually have something worth talking about. Yay! Maybe you can like comment if you have suggestions? Plank also has like an 8-bit music mode.